Hi everyone, my name is Peter and this is uh, the Raptor Aircraft uh, YouTube channel and uh, this video is going to be a series um, of videos that's going to be an introduction to the Raptor prototype that we've been building uh, for the last four years. So just to give you a quick little rundown, I actually started the design on this thing back in August of 2013. It took about um, two years altogether to do the design, most, well some of that was full time for about the first seven months and then after that it was kind of part time. And uh, come 2015, almost four years ago now, uh, moved over here to uh, Georgia, just north of Atlanta, and uh, put a group of guys together, and we started building uh, all the tooling and everything, molds and stuff like that, to build this aircraft. Um, and now it's uh, coming up. It's July of uh, of 2019 when you're watching this, and we're getting close to being able to fly the uh, prototype for the first time. So uh, in the meantime, uh, while I'm waiting for some parts to come in, I figured it would be a good time now to do a bit of an intro. And, uh, you know, for people who are new and for people who have you know, been following just for a little while, uh, bringing you up to speed on exactly what the aircraft is and what, why I designed it and all that sort of stuff. And uh, there's 400 videos prior to this one uh, that you can go back through and watch if you're interested, but they're, you know, a lot of them fairly tedious, just showing all the work that went into creating all the moulds and, and uh, the rest of the tooling and you know building all the parts and then eventually putting it all together into what you have uh, behind us here. So anyway, let me uh, just sort of dig into this and um, I'll uh, you know give you a walkthrough starting on the outside first and um, while I'm doing that I'll explain some of the reasons behind uh, the choices for the design and such. So this is a Raptor, it's basically um, a canard style aircraft, meaning that the uh, it has a four plane in the front, which is a little bit smaller than the main wing uh, in the back, and the engine is in the back as well with a, a propeller in the, what's called the pusher configuration. So uh, the reasons for uh, choosing this design was uh, you get uh, really good visibility out the front. Uh, it's generally going to be a little bit quieter uh, with the engine noise behind you and, and going away from you as you're moving along. And uh, it has some advantages um, in this style in that you can have the uh, gull wing doors here um, which you know allow uh, easy access into and out of the aircraft. Uh, but anyway, just uh, to give you a bit of a spec, so basically it's about a 20 foot long aircraft uh, altogether. It's uh, about a 33 foot wingspan from uh, winglet tip to winglet tip. Uh, it's all carbon fiber construction. It has a retractable uh, landing gear, which is an uh, electric uh, pump running a hydraulic system with hydraulic cylinders to uh, lift up and uh, put down the gear. Um, the four plane is about 16 feet wide as well. As you can see here, the elevator, you know, on the, on the trailing edge there. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about it? Yeah, it's a five seat design. Uh, right now I've got it configured for four seats, so two in the front and two in the back, and I'll show you the interior uh, a little bit later. Uh, as I said, it has the, the gold wing thing, and then the reason why I did this design in the first place was because um, most of the aircraft out there that I had experience with when I started flying were, you know, similar to that little uh, Cessna Cardinal over there in that the cabins were, you know, really small and, and uh, not a lot of room in them. And I couldn't understand why, you know, no one had built like an aircraft that was more like the cabin size of your, you know, standard sort of SUV that you drive around in the streets. So that's kind of what my initial goal was, to kind of build a cabin that was a bit larger like that, you know, so you'd have a lot more room uh, in it. And then the other problem that I saw with, uh, you know, general aviation was the cost. Uh, just flying um, was, you know, cost prohibitive because of the cost of the fuel and the aircraft were super expensive and the engines were expensive and maintenance was expensive. So I tried to figure out, you know, ways to save money and heading down the experimental route uh, seemed to be the best way to do that. And even with the, an experimental aircraft, you know, you can spend a lot of money uh, on your power plant, on your engine. And so I was looking at other alternatives for uh, compared to putting an aviation engine in there because you know if you wanted to put a Lycoming or Continental engine in there and with a high performance one with turbochargers you're looking at anywhere between sort of 80,000 and 120,000 just for the engine. So uh, what I decided to do was uh, look and see what other engine options would be available and what I came up with was 
choosing this uh, Audi diesel engine. Uh, so it, this is basically an engine out of an Audi Q7, a 2014 model that I picked up used. It has 8,000 miles on it. And uh, it's actually pretty good for this, um, for this solution because the weight is not too bad. You know, the, the, the core weight of the engine is only just three, 300 pounds. Um, it has plenty of power and it can run jet fuel. And I've actually ran it on jet fuel already. Um, and to run it on jet fuel, all you do is just put a little bit of um, what we use is the Marvel Mystery Oil, just add in a couple of ounces of that per, I think it's per five gallons, or yeah, a couple of ounces per five gallons, I think that's what I do. And that just uh, helps lubricate the system. And the other worry we had about running diesel fuel was uh, that at altitude, uh, the cold temperatures have made gel. So I've actually got a system set up there where uh, one of the intercoolers over here, this guy over here, can pump fuel through there and so it can draw heat out of the engine and uh, circulate fuel into the tanks to keep the fuel warm so it won't gel. Uh, but anyway, so this engine, uh, to give you some detail on this, basically it's a uh, Audi 3 litre TDI engine, a diesel engine, and what I did to it to modify it is I put a compound turbo setup on it. So if I show you how it works, you basically you have your inlet here, this is uh, on the inlet side, going into the first turbo, and then from there that feeds into the second turbo, and then there, from there that feeds up into uh, intercooler, and air comes in through a scoop in here. So that feeds in through the intercooler, and then the outlet air goes from that intercooler there over to the other intercooler that I said on the other side, the one that has the fuel running through it, and that's again not always on, not necessarily all, always on. And then from there, that inlet air goes into the engine, so it should be nice and cooled uh, by then. And then on the, on the hot side of the engine, you've got the uh, exhaust headers here and on either side, because it's a V6 engine. And they run into a Y pipe in here, and then they feed in and spool up the first turbo. And then from there, the hot air comes out of there. And it's a bit difficult to see from this side. I'll come around the other side. That feeds the... Uh, the second turbo here comes through this pipe here, feeds into the second turbo and spools that up and then the exhaust comes out here and of course we have a wastegate set up here and then there's another wastegate set up on the other side. And in, I had this running on the test stand um, and put about 20 hours on it in total and I've had it up to about 3800 RPM as the maximum I'm going to run it. And it seemed like it was putting out about uh, maximum about 400 horsepower. I think there's more there um, if I want it, but I'm probably going to just dial it down so it's uh, you know around about 350 horsepower. And with the reduction drive, and I'll get onto that in a second, the prop will only be spinning uh, maximum 2400 RPM and in cruise about 1700 RPM. Okay, so the reduction drive. Now that's the thing that I'm waiting on parts right now. So there's a couple of different things I'm waiting on, but I'll give you an explanation of how this works. It's basically a belt-driven system. And if you can see in here, there's two belts in here running off these larger pulleys here that are basically connected to this prop shaft. Runs through a housing here which is mounted to this frame which is that solid mounted to the aircraft. And then obviously the prop is bolted to that. And this is an uh, MT constant speed five bladed prop. As you can see, it's an MTV5, um, 74 and a half inches diameter and it's a, as I said, constant speed. So one of the things it has is an oil feed in here, which uh, when that oil feed is pressurized, it actually adjusts the pitch of the prop, and it adjusts the pitch of these blades, and uh, using the governor, which we actually have installed in here, uh, that automatically controls the power there. It keeps the RPM at a, a given uh, um, setting, so the engine won't overspeed and you get the best performance out of the prop. So uh, what I'm waiting for in terms of parts right now is a new uh, coupling that I have already ordered and received, but I'm waiting for um, a machine shop across the way to drill out the uh, matching bolt holes here to hook up to the flywheel. You see there's a couple of holes in there, and there's, uh, there's six of those all together. And then that coupling uh, hooks up to this lower part of the drive, which I'll show you in a minute. It's, it's um, been removed right now. And so that uh, runs the belts, and then... Uh, once that's all running, the governor pumps oil into this housing here um, to adjust the prop. 
and that's the other thing I'm waiting for. I have a new shuttle design in there that's um, being machined and when that comes back we'll be able to get that installed and then the constant speed prop will be working. So these are the two things I'm waiting on right now. I've still got other little projects to do um, but um, depending on when you're watching this uh, hopefully I'll have this thing ready to fly uh, by sometime in the uh, middle of August uh, after Oshkosh this year. So uh, it is a water-cooled engine and uh, there's the radiator up in here. It's not very big in terms of uh, you know length and width but it's fairly thick uh, and in testing so far it actually didn't seem to have a problem in cooling the engine and there's a fan underneath there as well that uh, comes on uh, you know when the temperature gets up over 170 degrees and uh, tries to maintain it there and we also have an air conditioning system uh, in the aircraft it's an aftermarket one um, from a company who makes uh, systems for uh, hot rods, it's called Vintage Air, and that's up in the cabin, most of it, but there's a, a condenser in here. I don't know if you can see that. And there's a condenser in there, and there's a couple of fans on the back of that. And then on the other side of the engine, uh, there's the uh, compressor down in there. Uh, there you can see there. That's the compressor um, for that air conditioning system. So, and that seems to be working pretty good. Got that charged up uh, a few weeks ago. So it's nice to have air conditioning in the aircraft as well. Um, that's one thing I didn't mention. It is designed to be pressurized. And we did take the cabin up to 5.2 PSI so far in testing uh, a while ago back in the shop. Uh, so other things about the engine, what's uh, cool is it has a, the alternator off the Audi on there. It's a 220 amp alternator. It's uh, totally overkill. Um, but you know that was just the one that fit this engine so we don't have to worry too much about uh, charging issues or anything like that and uh, the the power for it is um, well the battery is stored up in the nose and I'll show you that a bit later on and the power lines uh, the main power cables and stuff run down through the keel along with the air conditioning lines and all that the rest of the stuff that goes up through into the cabin so here I wanted to show you the lower part of the uh, reduction drive so this unit here is the one that mounts there um, to the back of the engine frame and then this shaft here runs up and engages the um, flywheel of the engine via this um, rubber coupling that I have. It's the one that I'm waiting for to get the modifications done to it and it's basically a torsional damper and then in between those two this pulley here sits on here and then that's where those uh, belts get attached to that drive the upper um, pulley system and ultimately the prop and that has a couple of bearings in there um, to handle all the loads and that so you're not really loading up the engine um, with the torque from the belt that's being handled through that, uh, that whole little drive unit there. So that's pretty much how that works and uh, the upper system uses you know a similar type of setup except large uh, tapered roller bearings enough to handle all the torque loads of the prop and also the torque loads of the belt uh, that are running through there. And uh, when I get uh, that new coupling done, I can put that all back together and uh, get the engine running again. And then once I have the new um, oil shuttle for the upper part of the redrive, I can get the constant speed prop working and we're pretty much ready to do flight testing at that point. So that was part one of this series and uh, tune in again next week and I'll have part two for you. Thanks for watching. <laughs>